Hey, I hope everybody's staying healthy and distant and getting some creativity time in. Uh, things are really starting to ramp up now, uh, especially in my area down near Philadelphia. Um, the, the number of cases is going to go up a ton this week, and we know it's coming, so just try to get everybody in the mindset not to panic and to just stay isolated and, and hope for the best for everybody. So today I want to talk about um, exposure compensation and horizon lines. So exposure compensation is our technical item of the day. And basically what that does, like early on when I was talking about auto mode and, and aperture and shutter priority, they are good at getting the exposure right under normal circumstances. And normal circumstances, by your camera's definition, is when it can total up the relative brightness of every single pixel in your image and it equals, uh, they, they take all the color information out and then it equals what they call 18% gray. And with 18% gray, the if, if that works out to be like a normal shot outside in the middle of the day or whatnot, it's gonna look fantastic. The exposure is gonna be just right. Where the problem develops is if you're actually working in an, an exposure where it is going to be more white or more black than average. So one example would be if you were going out to shoot in a snowy field, when it averages up all of the brightnesses of all the pixels, it's going to make them equal 18% gray. And if you were in a white snow field with a ton of white in the image, that is going to get turned gray, which means that it's going to underexpose your image by quite a bit and make all of that look gray. Or if you go out, um, one that I do a lot is classical musicians in tuxedos and black dresses. There's a ton of black in the image and it's going to average all of that out to equal 18% gray. But in order to get to gray, it actually overexposes all of that. It makes it gray instead of black. So if you're in a situation where you're going to be shooting either mostly white or mostly black stuff, you're going to want to use exposure compensation. And what that is, is basically a little override instruction to your camera saying, this is whiter than you think it's going to be, or this is blacker than you think it's going to be. And you can either dial it up or down accordingly and fix it. So the, the example I always like to talk about the most is the snowy field one. If you have that white, that white snowy field and it looks all gray and dingy on your image, it's underexposed. So you need to bump it up, maybe two thirds of a stop. Usually each tick of that little rating scale is going to be a third of a stop. So bump it up two thirds of a stop. Sometimes you could even try a whole stop or a third of a stop until you get to the point where it looks white and it looks correct. Now, a, a kind of a caveat here, if you go too far and if you overexpose, then the white actually does a thing that they call blowing out. Um, a blown out highlight means that you've registered it so brightly white that you lose all the texture information. You actually tell the camera to go so white that it, um, it loses all sense of color. So. For example, again, your snowy field, if there was a little bit of an orangey hue because of a sunset, or if there was like a shadow and it wasn't going to be pure white, once you've gone and blown out the highlights, all that information is gone. Same thing with the detail in the actual like flex and, and little drifts of snow. If you've blown it out, all that stuff's going to go away. So you don't want to do that. Um, on the underexposed side, if you're doing blacks that are too black, you lose all the texture. One of the ones that I'm always watching for in my classical music stuff is making sure that you see the fabric texture, for example, the seams on tuxedo pants or um, the, the little tiny wrinkles that are in clothing or the little texture that it's in stuff. Um, if you get to the point where it's too dark, it just becomes a, a swath of black and then that is not accurate to what your eye would see in real life. So, and kind of like going back to what we talked about the first couple of days, each camera is going to get you to exposure compensation a little differently. On my Sony, I love this about Sony. I never had this on Canon. You have a little exposure compensation dial. You actually can just right up here, turn it up or down a third of a stop at a time on this little clicker um, and, and instantly you can make that correction. Most of the time you're gonna have to go in through a menu system on a camera to get there. 
Um, I'd say probably 90% of the time at least. So, all right, that's the first half for exposure compensation. Now, the second topic I want to talk about, and I guess when we get to these um, more artistic or compositional elements, there's always the caveat that it's um, rules are made to be broken. But for the most part, if the horizon is in your image, the horizon wants to be level. One of the things that every now and there's a little bit of a trend and everybody gets to the point where they're doing these weird wonky angles and the, the, hori the horizon is not horizontal. Um, if you look at professional photographers' portfolios and you go through and you look at all of their images, you may, maybe, find one image in a portfolio of a great photographer that is on an angle. 99.9% .9 of the time, images in their portfolio, that horizon line is going to be straight. When you look at a lot of images like photographers do, it starts to really bug you when there is an, a non-purposeful crooked horizon. Now, that is all under the, the, the whole category of there are instances where maybe you'll choose to break that rule. But a lot of people at first, I think they start breaking that rule way, way, way too much. Um, and especially people that are really looking to get a creative angle on things, all of a sudden they'll, they'll, they'll get some, you know, everything looks like it's topsy-turvy. Um, if you scroll around on a Facebook feed of images and you see non-photographers' images of uh, the, the, the beach and you see that horizon line, you'll, you'll see it'll be like <laughs> totally crooked and you kind of tilt your head to look at the picture that way. So you want to avoid that. You, you want to have a nice straight horizon line. Um, I also, for example, on the on my wall here behind me, each day before I, when I set this stuff up to shoot my video, I make sure that that is straight across. Um, if something's supposed to be going straight across your frame, it generally looks better if it actually does that. So that's it for today. Happy shooting and good luck, and I hope everybody stays healthy and well. Have a great day.